What's up, everybody, and welcome to yet another edition of the Falcons Final Whistle Podcast. I'm Scott Baer, alongside my partner in crime, Tori McElhaney. Yay! And we're here signing yearbooks, getting ready to go on a little summer vacation, KIT. Put the phone number in the back. Make sure to sign next to a funny quote by your name. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's what we're going to do. I, we, can, we might not see each other in person for like a long time. That is true. We may, I, And it was funny because I was walking into the building today and all of the players and the coaches were walking out and they're like, have a good summer. Exactly. Like, okay. I'll see you when we get back. <laughs> it's time. The, the NFL offseason, which you would think would be from the Super Bowl to the start of training camp. We all know that ain't it. Nope. Between schedule release and draft and free agency. and Honestly, we've been working harder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true. Heading into the off-season program, which starts with strength and conditioning in April and carries on through the mandatory minicamp, which just wrapped up the on-field portions of it on Wednesday. Yeah. On Thursday, as we were recording this, the players and Arthur Smith and the coaching staff, they're all at Top Golf, I believe. Yes. Uh, that's Shank and th- drives. Honestly, I'm kind of sad that I didn't catch an invite to that. I know. I am not good at golf by any means, but I would love to just go hang, hit, hit a few golf balls, and see who the best golfer of the team is. I feel like it's one of the coaches, but I know we were talking to Desmond Ritter the other day and he said that he wants to get Marcus out there and and hit a few rounds so we'll see here's the funny part about that that conversation got brought up in the presser with Marcus Mariota yesterday did it really I wasn't in that yeah and he is such a I wouldn't say soft-spoken but he's a calm even keel guy yeah he heard about the Ritter challenge and he basically said he would love to play him he hears he hears Ritter is very good I don't know what handicap numbers mean, but I know that when he said his handicap, all the golfers in the crowd wearing the golf shirts, they went, ooh, you're pretty good. And he's like, yeah, I can get around. So okay, so I, it's Marcus is the best one on the team. We're going to go out on that limb. I think it's, I'm willing to say that. I'm also willing to say that Kyle Pitts has only been playing since January and I think has a very natural swing and okay. give him a year or two and we might be able to – have a pretty good showdown at Chateau Alon or something like that. I'm so down for that. Just put me in the golf court, like the golf cart. Yeah. Like, I won't play. I'll just watch everybody. I can commentate mm-hmm. the it, with with the truly in hand. Live streamed Falcons final whistle yeah. from the golf course <laughs> with all this equipment on the back of the cart. Tori and Scott <laughs> whispering very quietly about what's happening. Oh, I can't do, I can't do that. We already, you're not good at that. Yeah. No. Okay. But I still think it's an idea on the agenda. Maybe Um, we should actually talk about what went on this week. That seems a little crazy. Um, I have a tough (laughs) time remembering what happened yesterday because it may have been borderline heat stroke blackout situation for someone from California. And we always talk about the dry heat and things like that. Here's the thing though. That was a true Georgia yeah, and I'm from Georgia, and it was still brutal. It was just thick with two C's. Like, it was <laughs> it was thick. You could cut it with a knife. It really did feel that way. I was on the sideline, and Casey Hayward, who is from Perry, Georgia, so middle Georgia, he knows he, he did, in high school, he did two-a-days where you literally are have full pads on. You're going 110%. Guys are pa- probably passing out left and right. Even he said, this is different. Yeah. It was a different type of heat. It was. And Arthur Smith, who, if you've seen his press conference, likes to take gentle jabs and ribs at some members of the media, uh, walked around the field with about 20 minutes left, yeah. and it, it was hot. And, yeah. and most everyone, because the cameras can't shoot practice at that point, why are the camera guys and camera women standing out there? Of course, they're going to go back inside. But at one point, there were only two people standing outside in the sun. Yeah, we were having a little powwow underneath Tori, a tree. Tori, Justin Felder, and yeah. I. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we were underneath the tree, and Dean Pease called us out. And I, I said, I was like, I don't have a problem with I, like it doesn't hurt my pride to be soft. Like I, if if y'all want to call me soft, by all means, it doesn't hurt me at all. And then Arthur Smith said something, mm-hmm. and then the best thing happened. It, yeah, it it did. We were standing there underneath this tree, and Arthur is just given media up and down the road for not being out in the sun. I was looking for partial credit for just being outside. He he gave me zero he, points. He, yeah, he and, and someone yelled like it's not for everyone. 
And then one Eric Harris turns around, points at Scott Bear, who is underneath the tree, and said, Scott, get out here. <laughs> and he said, we're trying to build a culture here. And, and what so, did I do? So Scott t- gets out from under the tree, and he stood in the sun for the remainder of practice. I did. Yeah. Just, I mean, we are trying to build a culture around here. Hopefully, I don't it, know how it's much. A, hopefully, it's, it's a culture of respecting where there's shade sometimes. Yeah. And knowing when to hold them and knowing when to fold them. Right. Because I was overheated. I wore gray cotton, which is a rookie move. Yeah, I Scott. Think. I was making fun of Scott because his shirt kind of looked like Tata. Oh, yeah. It was, it was, it was not a good look. Um, but they got through two days of mini camp. I'm not going to p- use the P word. Practice word. Oh I yeah, say the word practice I've because been Arthur Smith it. says their workout sessions. I think what right. he's trying to do, he's trying to create a semantic division between what you see in training camp and what you're seeing with no pads, where they're installing and they're learning plays. Yeah, and maybe you know to not chart every single uh, rep that happens out there. That, but I think general impressions are over the course of the two days of open mini camp sessions. Yeah, and the OTAs. That this is a team that, and we talked to several people about this. One, the chip on your shoulder mentality is real. And two, this group is really working hard at being a cohesive group that likes each other. I think, and if you can do that, we don't know how it'll be tested by adversity yet. But that's going to be an important thing for a team as they try to overperform uh, expectations this season. Yeah, I think it was Grady Jarrett when we were talking to him the first day, and he said something that I found very interesting where he was talking about how he felt like this team, maybe more than any team he's played with here in Atlanta, was friends. They were friends. Yeah. They were very, very close. They all had a similar mindset, and I think it does go back to what you're saying about like the the whole chip on your shoulder mentality. I think they all are very aware of the outside perspective of the organization at this current point in time. And I think it's honestly kind of bringing them together in a way that maybe you don't see a lot at the professional level because you are professionals. You're coming in to do a job. You're not necessarily coming in to like, I don't know, the, the word team isn't necessarily something that I think carries the weight that it does at like the high school or the college level because you are you, you are a bunch of individuals. It's mm-hmm. a profession. And to hear Grady Jarrett say that that he feels like this team is so close already and we're only through mandatory minicamp, I think that speaks volumes to kind of what you're saying, like the cohesiveness of, of the group and how they all just kind of genuinely like being around each other. Yeah, and I think in in terms of execution, one, check out Tori's, what she learned at minicamp day one and two. That's, I don't know, maybe 2,500 words between the two of them. Holy cow. I mean, I wrote many, many words, um, but I will say probably 500 of those words was a full play-by-play breakdown of the offensive and defensive linemen uh, catching punts yesterday uh-huh. in order to see who didn't have to run sprints at the end of practice. I don't know. That's like gold to me. I, I did spend a lot of time on my day two breakdown going over that because I did feel like it was important for people to know who <laughs> caught their punts and who didn't. Yeah, and I think it is. And trust me, we're going to get to the Ritter, Mariota ness yeah. of everything and Cordero Patterson. and But let's really get down to the fact that it was almost like watching a penalty shootout. That's yeah. what somebody from 92.9 was saying yesterday. And I think it's kind of right, and it ended up being three for the offensive lineman, cut everyone, two, because Anthony Rush went first. He was the only guy to, 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 to a drop. Catch. There was a little bit of sidestepping here's, he had to do. Well, here's the thing. He was in a tough spot, and it cost the defense. Yes, I think some of the other ones, uh, I think about like the one that was uh, – so Jalen Mayfield went after Anthony Rush, and it was a significantly easier punt. Now, I'm not saying that catching a punt is easy. If you threw me out there, there's absolutely no way I'm catching – anything at all I'm not catching it I just know I wouldn't but Anthony Rush had to like I don't know if the wind caught his or something but I will give Anthony Rush credit like one to go first that's hard but two he had the hardest punt to catch because it drifted so far in the air so Anthony if you're listening to the Falcons final whistle podcast one thank you one thank you two I got your back bro 
Yeah, 100%. This is this is the Anthony Rush defense portion of it because he was in a difficult spot. He was. Ultimately, everybody else caught them, which I thought was kind of impressive. Last year, they lined it was the same type of thing where mm-hmm. offense versus defense it was Lee Smith versus Marlon Davidson kicking field goals. Love it. Davidson's pretty good. Pretty Maybe good like an emergency kicker. Yeah. Possibly. Uh, this year, catching punts, I thought was pretty fun Who as well. Who knew that he had the special teams prowess of which he does? I know, right? Yeah. Maybe it's like an underrated skill that we don't know about. Um, but that was a fun way to end practice. I, I think it's the right way to, to conclude a spring that while we see a lot of these guys out there in practice and the heat and stuff like that, they're meeting a ton. Yeah. It's a Monday through Thursday sort of thing for six weeks. The rookies come in, but the vets have been lifting weights even longer so I will say this too I think it was good work I'm yeah sorry. no I, I was just gonna say like I saw a lot of tweets like when I was joking around about the offensive and defensive linemen like catching punts and everything and there were so many people that was like oh my gosh like the Falcons aren't taking things seriously blah 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 and it's like come on yeah. like let's let's take a breather like let these guys have fun they've been putting in months of work at this point and the final period of practice like they want to go like have fun. Honestly, I hate I hated that. I hate it when people are like not letting people have their fun. Yeah, I, I this think it's supposed to be fun. Yeah, and everybody does it. Yeah, like the, it. This mini camp, mandatory mini camp, is always three practices. I I can't think of a single team that actually is on the field for three days. Right. Because it's time to reward some of the hard work. And again, you want to go into that summer vacation on a high and feeling good about yourself, and hopefully, go find a white sand beach. I'm going to do that too and, you know, eventually, right, get together and throw a little bit and get ready and stay in shape for training camp when everything really gets cranked up. So ultimately how they looked, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's some diehards out there who want to know about quarterbacks. That's going to be a driving storyline, I don't know, for a long time until we have an answer for the long-term solution at quarterback post Matt Ryan, which means we're going to have QB quote unquote competition. Right. And then we're going to have is that person the long term solution? And should the other person come in? And we're going to be talking about quarterbacks forever. So, without breaking down yardage totals and completion percentages, generally, what were your thoughts about how the quarterbacks did, about what you heard from the quarterbacks and the coaches? Uh, your impressions? Yeah, I think it was. I want to go first off by saying that this time is really more, it's I put a lot more weight in what they're learning in the quote-unquote classroom than what we're seeing actually out on the field. Like, yeah, sure, you can see Marcus Mariota go six for seven and a seven on seven. But, like, you have no idea, like, what coaches are calling and and you have no idea, like, what they're asking these guys to work on, both offensively and defensively. So I don't necessarily put a lot of stock into what I am actually seeing on the field. I put more stock in what these guys are saying in terms of how comfortable they feel in the install process. And I think that was something that Arthur Smith talked about on Wednesday when he was talking about the progress of minicamp and where he wants these these guys to be and what he considers a, sex, a, a successful minicamp to be. And he made the comment that he, he that, that it's all about like the install and getting the terminology right and making sure that everyone is on the same page in terms of how things operate here in Atlanta with this staff and with this team. And so when you're talking about Marcus Mariota and Desmond Ritter, they are kind of the, uh, the, the focal point of that because offensively, everything has to run through them. And and so I thought that Arthur Smith's comments about Marcus and Desmond understanding the scheme and how far along they are in terms of feeling comfortable and confident in it was what I took the most from this portion. Yeah, and there's a lot of in, there were a lot of interesting things said about both guys and from both guys about – some uh, question that you asked Marcus yesterday and has been a topic that he talked about is trying to play free within the offense, not mm-hmm. just go through his progressions one, two, three, four, and make a choice, but to 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 play some jazz out there. And if he's thinking about that in June, that's going to help him in July and August. I thought, not knowing where the ball was supposed to go, I thought his ball looked pretty clean. Mm-hmm. I thought it was generally very catchable. I thought it was a receiver-friendly ball if – we're going to get real minuscule with it. When it and when it comes to Desmond, Ritt, Desmond Ritter, I thought Arthur Smith said something interesting yesterday. I'm just going to read this quote uh, so I don't mess it up. Behind the scenes, the things that he has done as a rookie, really from the neck up, 
Um, now I'm paraphrasing, is what has impressed Arthur Smith about Desmond Ritter. Now I'm back to quoting. He's operating when we're doing rookie walkthroughs, when we do these installations on and off the field and in his command, then you're betting on some of the physical things you see at times to catch up. That means mentally he's locked in. Physically, he's going to start executing that better. He's light years ahead of most – and here's the pull quote. Mm -hmm. He's light years ahead of most young quarterbacks in terms of playing from the neck up. I will give him that compliment. That mm -hmm. compliment comes from somebody who doesn't like complimenting rookies. Right. I don't know. Break that down for me. Oh, gosh. I mean, I just think it's like, here's the thing. And it's something that we talked to Desmond Ritter about two days ago. Yeah. He said, if someone asked him what surprised him about coming into the league. And he made the comment. He was like, I thought that learning the scheme and getting all getting everything down pat in terms of the install was going to be the most difficult part of this. And he said he feels pretty good about mm -hmm. where he's at. He feels very confident. Which is confident. such a cool answer as it opposed is. to the other way around. You right. Know? You would rather him be good from the neck up. But, you know, and so I think, and he also too was, he was like, now it's about, you know, almost like the muscle memory of it. He was talking, he told, he told this cool anecdote where he was talking about how he goes home at the end of the night and he goes through the playbook and he gets the play call and he says it out loud and records it on his phone and then puts his headphones on and lives listens back to what the play call is yeah. so that he gets it and he has that muscle memory of saying it out loud and all, all of that kind of stuff. I thought that was really, really interesting in terms of where he is and what kind of his overall scope of the offense is. Now, it, you know, we're talking about a number 74 overall pick. So Arthur Smith saying like football IQ is there. We got to catch him up physically. That makes complete sense. And I, and I think it's easier to have it that way than the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, I would rather someone I, – I always – my dad used to always tell me in, in that when I was playing uh, sports in high school, he was like, you're never really going to out-athlete anybody, but you can outsmart a lot of people. And I, I'm i not saying that, like, Desmond Ritter isn't an athlete. We have seen that he is. I'm just saying that, like, it bodes well for his overall development that we are sitting here on June 16th talking about how confident – he feels in the scheme and not only that he feels in the scheme but how confident Arthur Smith feels in Desmond Ritter commanding a huddle yeah it's not just the the quote that we read and then broke down it's the fact that it was uttered at all in front of a microphone yes and what Arthur Smith's tendencies are that I think that ad, it adds weight to it I think that's to your point that is an important step now just because we're saying all those things doesn't mean that we're saying we're not talking about who's going to start or who's not no. going to start. Let's not extrapolate what we're saying. Yeah. Let's keep it within the context uh, lecture over. I do think Marcus Mariota, again, every time I come away from one of his media scrums. It's just a nice guy, that a Marcus nice, Mariota. A nice guy who gets it yeah. and who I think is a good leader for this team in his own unique, not Matt Ryan, not Desmond Ritter, not anybody else type yeah. of way. And he seems very comfortable here not only within the scheme, but with the coaching staff and with what he's doing. And I think all those things are positives at, at this point. Now, this is a layer, you know, like situation. Every time that we go, we do one of these pods or we see more practices, we get more information and we stack it, right? Yeah. But the early impression from my perspective, him often throwing against air or quarterbacks, yeah. cornerbacks going at 70%, um, I, think he's, I think he managed and I think he did – he did well during the offseason program. Uh, somebody who we haven't seen during the offseason program is running back slash offensive weapon Cordero Patterson. Mm -hmm. Arthur Smith talked about him being on his own, I'm not sure what term he used, uh, veteran, veteran offseason off program, program or something. Yeah, um, he's on a different program. Right, <laughs> and the, the term isn't necessarily vital, but him not being here, right, mm -hmm. that can be a flashpoint yeah. for fans. It's not necessarily a flashpoint for me I don't care at all that he's not here right now right like I don't care at all that he's not on the field yeah he he was here he, he yeah took a physical he was around but he did not participate in, in practice and I thought Arthur Smith explained it perfectly like he's and like, it was smart of him to explain it yes I'm glad that he did explain it because that was like you said that was going to be a flashpoint for people him saying look like I'm not gonna rev Cordero Patterson up for two days in June I need him at 110 percent when we get to July, not just July, because I feel like he'll, he's very much going to still be 
not revved fully up through training camp. I highly doubt we see him at all in the preseason at all. I think he it, it really is a we need him at 110% week one ready to go because you know from last year how much of a load he carried. And I think it's also we talk about Arthur Smith paying compliments. He actually paid a compliment to Cordero Patterson and essentially being like, I trust CP that he's going out in the offseason and doing what he needs to do. We communicate all the time. So I'm not at all worried that he was not out here for two days in minicamp. No, I'm not trying to correlate CP to somebody that I covered for a long time who's in the Hall of Fame now, uh, LaDainian Tomlinson, mm-hmm. right? Different mm-hmm. categories? Yes. But in the preseason, they were treated the same. LT didn't participate in anything, and he didn't take a preseason snap, and – Nobody cared. No. Now, again, I know he's a gold jacket person, but I think the same logic applies that yes. for a position where you're going to take such a high volume of hits and take a, such a high volume of touches and maybe learning from last year where he took all those hits and all those touches that you want to try to preserve his health and um, his freshness as much as humanly possible. I don't think that's any problem. Now, again, we've, we've talked so much about not overanalyzing the – off-season program, and we're not doing that. But this is the first time we've seen him five times now, three open OTA practices and two mini camp sessions. Mm-hmm. Um, general impressions, seeing this collection on a field for the first time is a, is a point worth discussing yeah. here. So as you looked at it, was there any position group that stood out to you that you were intrigued by with these new personnel packages and things like that? Any, anything that jumps out at you there? I really like the secondary. I I really do. I really like A.J. Terrell and Casey Hayward and Jalen Hawkins, Richie Grant, Isaiah Oliver when he gets to be 100% Darren Hall. I mean, I think the this group is going to look very different than it did last year. Eric Harris, I, I didn't say his name, but he's going to be a part of this too. I, I just think that there are a lot of good athletes one in the secondary two some guys with something to prove we talk about Richie Grant wanting to make a significant jump in his second year in the league I I just feel really honestly a little bit confident in this secondary's ability to do what needs to be done I'm not in terms of like position groups that I'm worried about I am not at all worried about the secondary I I do think that It's one of the strengths of this Falcons team. Uh, And I just just really, really think watching them operate together, I think they have a very cohesive group. Uh, Talk about, like, the deep safeties and and the cornerbacks and everything. I think they work well together. Um, And, again, I know I've said this thousands of times at this point. I just like Casey Hayward and A.J. Terrell. Mm -hmm. And they have a really good relationship. They've known each other for years. Uh, They have the same agent. I I just think – that this group has something that is going to be worthwhile to see. Right. I, my, my first instinct about position group is the interior linebackers because there's so much new and Dion is still hurt and mm-hmm. we don't know what's going to happen with him ultimately. Um, but the more I think about what what I'm intrigued by, I don't know if impress is the right term, but this – Intrigued is the better word. Yeah, yes. but this group of pass catchers – Yes. It, so we obviously know what Kyle Pitts can do, and I've seen Brian Edwards play a lot, having covered the Raiders before. And Drake London is a new piece so you, that you try to keep an eye on. But there's a lot of guys here that could be contributors, like Alameda Zacchaeus mm-hmm. and Kaderil Hodge yeah. and Anthony Ferkser, right? That there are so many different guys that are new to the system that could be intriguing possibilities. You think if even if it's um, – Demi or Bird, if I'm saying it right, as a speed threat, that there's a lot of guys you think, how can they plug and play and find the best five? Mm -hmm. They're not going to have – they have, what, 13 pass catchers? Yes. 13 receivers, seven tight ends, maybe Mm -hmm. a little bit less now. Eight if you count Felipe, which you should. Which you should. Yeah. Right. So ultimately, how this group will transform into five or six Mm -hmm. receivers and three or four tight ends is going to be fascinating. I'm really excited about that portion of the offseason because we know it's coming. We know that the Falcons are going to make cuts with these receiving weapons and we know they're going to add more to the lines of scrimmage. We, we know that Arthur Smith has said that he's explained it. I am really curious to see how they go about roster construction as we get closer and closer to 53 man cut down in terms of who they value and the, 
body type and the skill set of these receivers of which they're valuing because there are a lot of different guys out there. And I I wonder, like, are they just going to go big? Are they just going to keep Geronimo Allison and Auden Tate, and you already have Kyle Pitts as a tight end, you have Drake London. I mean, are you just going to go big and then have like OZ? <laughs> mm-hmm. Or are you going to try and add some different variations, which I tend to think that that's probably the direction of which they'll go. And so I, I'm i very, very interested to see which body type they're valuing as we get closer to week one. See, here's the thing, is that I'm a huge roster construction nerd, and you're a huge roster con- construction nerd, and sometimes they get together and we can go super nerdy. But I, I, c- I could talk a whole half hour just on the body types and the types of talents you can create yeah. or mix together to find the ultimate um, the ultimate uh, what grouping, yes. right? So you can get uh, the, the most out of it. Kind of as we're wrapping up here, Tori, um, there was something interesting that happened yesterday in practice, and mm-hmm. it's I uh, think it was the number five story on Sports Center's top ten yesterday, and yeah. that was uh, top five play, top top five play, and we, and we saw it live, and you know the play was Kyle Pitts running a relatively standard route yep. and scoring a touchdown. You'll probably see a lot of that this year, but it was him versus AJ Terrell, which happens a couple times a day. But the best part about it was there was some. Verbal exchange, not well, heated, not no. not contentious. Yeah, just uh, no one on the defense wanted number eight to score and all day. They were very vocal about that. Very vocal. It was fantastic, and it was funny because after practice, we were talking to Casey Hayward, and he said AJ and Kyle were going at it before practice even started, just like trash talking each other, all in good fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then during practice, the entire secondary is just like don't get the ball to eight, like no touchdowns for eight. And it was fantastic. It's what I love about practice is you get to see those interactions. And then Kyle goes and he does score a quote unquote touchdown Mm -hmm. um, and launches the ball up in the air, like has some choice words for the secondary, the DBs, and then walks back over. And it's just so fun. And after practice, they were talking to Kyle and he, he was talking about like the competition between, between him and AJ Terrell and, I think it's so great to see two guys who we know is the foundation and kind of the face of the franchise at this point. It's two guys you want to build around if you're Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith. And to see them have that relationship and that healthy dose of competition and to go against each other as much as they do, I think is really fun to watch. Yeah, definitely. And it's a good, again, yes, it's work. Yes, it should be fun. Yes, they should want to yeah talk back and forth and as Kyle Pitts put it laugh about it in the locker room Mm -hmm. which is exactly what happened I'm sure at some point during camp Kyle's gonna get got by AJ oh of course that's that's gonna and Casey probably yeah those things are gonna happen but I I think that what you need to get accomplished from the offseason to make your quarterbacks feel like they know the system make your inside linebackers feel like the and safeties feel like they know the system go back and read the story on Jalen Hawkins and Richie Grant, mm-hmm. they're they're getting it down. Mm-hmm. Rashawn Evans is getting it down. And I think that there's a little bit of positivity as they move through, as they have moved through the offseason program and they head towards training camp. So with that, we're going to go ahead and put a bow on this one, wrapping up the OTA sessions and really heading off for summer vacation. We're still going to give you some, some good quality content yeah. for your ear here and there's going to be an awesome mini series coming up that's all the hint i'm going to get but can keep, not freaking wait so for that. Go, it's just going to be so great yeah all as we head towards training camp in late july so thank you guys very much as always for downloading for listening do us a solid if you haven't already rate review subscribe all that fun stuff and again appreciate you listening and uh, we are going to talk to you real real soon